Joining me right now is DiBianchi, a real estate and former million dollar listing Miami star, Sam DiBianchi. Sam, it's great to see you. Thanks very much for being here. Thanks for having me. I'm here to That's sell you on money, Miami. Sam. <laughs> We're not talking about a few thousand or even tens of thousands, but even hundreds of thousands of dollars. And why? Well, if we start with cost of living, living here in Miami, we're about 23% above the national average. But when you compare it to San Francisco, they're at 83%. And of course, where you are in New York City, 137% above the national average for cost of living, which is nuts. Then we could talk about taxes all day long. As you know, Florida is a very tax-friendly state. We do not have a state income tax. So that will save people that earn anywhere between 150000 to 650000 You know, you're getting taxed between 27% and 35% here in Miami. Compared to in New York City, you're getting taxed at 36% to 45% and 36% to 46% in San Francisco. So the moral of the story is if you like to make your money and keep your money, Money, you need to move here to Miami. Wow. So it's not just taxes. It's also the cost of living. Cost of living. That's why it really does add up. And a lot of people don't realize that. They just think, well, you know, I'm making more so that way yeah. I have more to spend. But what you're spending on is costing so much more. So it really makes a difference. And, and people should really analyze other places to live if they're not set in these high cost areas. It's a great point. Um, nearly 165,000 residential properties reportedly filed for foreclosure in the U.S. in the first six months of the year. That's a 153 percent increase, Sam, year over year. What's going on here? Sure. I mean, look, there, there's always going to be some level of foreclosures. I know Illinois is the highest. We saw in April 14 percent year over year as well. The, the silver lining is we do need more inventory. I'm not saying that it's great to have foreclosures, but we do need more properties to sell. The other thing, too, is when you're a buyer, to really make sure you're putting yourselves in the right position, not a position to fail. I know a lot of times people think I'm going to have this job forever or I'm going to have this savings forever, and they don't think long term. So a lot of people like to blame um, foreclosures on adjustable rate mortgages, which sometimes that does come into play because you can get many times a better rate than a 30-year fix on an adjustable rate mortgage. But once that term is done, your rate could skyrocket. So if you're not prepared, if you don't have money in the bank, if you don't have job security, you really might want to rethink which way and which which loan you want to get and obtain. It is it, is it and, and by the way, right now, rates are off of the highs in terms of mortgage rates. How would you assess home buying and the ability to get that mortgage today? And I know that it's bifurcated. It depends on location. But what can you tell us in terms of the business right now with regard to where rates are? I can tell you that as rates continue to circle around 7%, a lot of buyers are still on the fence. They're hesitant. What do we do? Are they going to go down? What kind of deals am I going to get? Sellers are being more negotiable. But as a whole, it's it's been slower than what it has been in the past few years. And people really want to make sure if they're buying this home, they, want, they don't want to have a lot of renovations. They want it to be more turnkey. The opportunities are really where there's more fixer-uppers although a lot of people don't want to pay these higher mortgage rates and then come out of pocket for that. But right. there are some sense. opportunities okay. out there. You just have to go and find them. Sam, thanks so much. Good info from you as always. Sam DiBianchi joining us this morning. Thank you so much. The next